a friend of mine and a fellow coach once summed up aerobic base so perfectly that I want to share it with you. He said, you can't fire a cannon from a canoe. And what that really means is, if you want the kapow in a race, if you want to feel like you're giving it everything and you're working to your full potential, you're going to need a solid, stable platform beneath it. And that's what your aerobic base is. Uh, jailbreak. So this week, what we're going to talk about is what the aerobic base actually is, why it's important, and how you actually train it. Because those are the three things that I think, if you have that knowledge, the world is your lobster, as they say. The great news is that you can also build a big aerobic base doing this, and even doing this. Back once again for the Renegade Master, had to say that. But welcome back to the channel, and this week, as I say, we're talking about aerobic base, which is a really important topic of conversation, but also it's a very misunderstood topic of conversation. And I think that really comes down to people hear all these terms banded around like aerobic base and anaerobic energy system and zone one and zone two. And because it sounds so complicated, we shy away from it. But I'm here to break it down in as simple terms as possible so that you know what it is and how to access it and how to train it and why it's important because it is so vitally important for endurance athletes and it's something that we consistently get wrong me included when I started but again as I always say learn from my mistakes give them to you so you don't make the same mistakes and I thought what we would do is we would actually just touch on because you know I love drawing by the way I'm not an art teacher but I love a little graph we're going to talk about what the energy systems in our body are when we're actually exercising because that's important to understand before we start talking about aerobic based training look at it like this the very basics are that your body runs on three energy systems depending on time and intensity of activity at lower intensities it uses the aerobic energy system which just means in the presence of oxygen and that's what we mean by aerobic base and it's sometimes also referred to as zone one and two and in theory you can stay in the base zones indefinitely once conditioned it could be for hours and hours sitting above that and lasting for roughly an hour is your lack acid system and it's when your body switches from using oxygen as part of the indefinite energy process and it starts to have to use it in the process of breaking down the lactate you build up in your muscles when you're working harder you know when you're working quite hard and your muscles start to burn that's lactate building up which is a byproduct of intense exercise and oxygen breaks it down you can be in this state of exercise for about an hour but you do have to slow down or stop after that and above that is something endurance athletes rarely need to access and I've drawn it a bit wrong here but it's the anaerobic energy system which means without oxygen and can only last for about 10 seconds to around a minute and the thing is all of these energy systems actually run at the same time but just one is dominant depending on how hard you're working but the trick is knowing how to train the right systems at the right time but I guess we still haven't touched on what the aerobic base is is so here it is as best as i can describe it it is your body's ability to take in the oxygen from the environment around it and use it in the best way possible while you're exercising to fuel you for the long term so i'm not going to get into details but remember we spoke about how amazing the brain is because it is the just most mind-blowing thing it will see an opportunity to improve if you are out running and you are truly training your aerobic base, you're keeping it easy, your body's like, oh, how can I make this even better? Your brain's thinking of ways. So what it does is it sends signals around to do things, crazy things like increase the size or strength of your heartbeat, increase the size of your lungs, increase capillary density in your muscles to deliver more blood. It puts more red blood cells in your blood, more mitochondria in the muscle. I, I'm not gonna get bogged down by it, it does, it does amazing things, all because you're training easy, but the brain wants to make it even easier for you, so it makes all these changes. Okay. So we know how energy systems work in our body, we know what our aerobic base is, but we still really need to know why it's so important for us as endurance athletes. 
Without a solid big base or our foundations, your top end of your lactic acid system won't be as stable. Remember, all zones work at the same time. You don't want to be in a situation where you want to put the hammer down in a race and go hard, but there's nothing underneath to support that effort. And typically in newer athletes, we see a lot of wasted miles in training. It's the inability to truly stay in base zones when training and spending some time in zone two, but also some time in zone three. And the moment you cross to zone three, your body stops focusing on building your aerobic base and it focuses on removing the lactate you're building up. There are specific sessions for both, so we need to train like there are. And that's the thing. There are training sessions for base work, aerobic base, but there are also training sessions, different ones for your lactic acid system. And what you need to start avoiding is that middle ground where you're training a bit of both, but not focusing on either because there's very little benefit to be had there because your body has to keep switching. What we want to do is, we want to turn these orange bits where you're creeping into your zone three because you feel nice and you feel like you're pushing hard. We want to turn these orange bits into pure blue. That's where you want to be. For your whole base session, you want to be completely in your base zones. So how do we get into our base zones? How do we even know what our base zones is? I suppose would be actually your first question. You're not going to like the answer, by the way. It's not 220 minus your age, that is completely debunked, it doesn't work. I have friends who are exactly the same age as me that have completely different working and resting heart rates, so forget that. Also forget how your Garmin or your watch calculates your zones for you, they are not reliable either. I'm going to link a video here, I'm not going to talk too much, I'm going to link a video here about how you calculate your own zones, but I'm afraid, spoiler alert, it does mean a hard 5k time trial on a flat surface so that there's no spikes in heart rate or dips in heart rate where you're climbing or going downhill. If you do that, you might be able to get very, very good heart rate data and heart rate zones if you train by heart rate. Because then think about it, training will be a breeze. It takes away all of the guesswork. If you know your zones, you can keep an eye on your watch and it will tell you if you are creeping into a zone where you don't want to be and you will make the most out of every single session. And if you don't train with heart rate, all is not lost. I'm gonna give you some tips now that might help you access your aerobic base zone. Number one, you are only allowed to breathe through your nose for the first kilometer. That will keep you running in your base zones. It will ensure that you're not pushing too hard too early. Remember the feeling? Bottle it, keep going with it. Number two would be feel guilty. Feel like you could go harder, but you're not. That's always a really good way of running in your aerobic zone. And numero uh, three, Make sure that you could hold a really easy conversation while you're out running, if you were with a friend or not. It shouldn't be fragmented sentences and it certainly shouldn't just be one word. It should be a nice flowing conversation. Then you're in your base zones, then you're training your base. And what you will tend to find is that you will get faster over time without actually training faster. Look at loads of articles out there on the internet. Look at some of the other YouTubers' videos. They will tell you train slow to get fast and I truly believe that also if you're building a strong foundation underneath and you've already done some of that harder work in the past that's still there it doesn't go away but you're putting a better foundation to fire the cannon from it will no longer be a canoe it'll be a stable surface or an armada boat or whatever well however you want to use the analogy but that will mean that you have a strong stable foundation to fire from and go faster essentially your body will just get better at doing all the things that it needs to do for you to exercise that's how it works so now if somebody asks you what is your aerobic base you can say it is the ability of my body to efficiently use oxygen in the energy process or you know you don't have to look like I looked if you want to say that but it's something like that it's that's what is your bread and butter of training it's the thing that's gonna make you faster it's the thing that's gonna help you train for longer and it's gonna keep you in it for life and of course the sessions that most easily train that are your easy runs they don't have to be long but it can be 10k half marathon marathon 5k 
but just keep them easy and that's training your aerobic base. Zone two and under. Oh, and by the way, the competitions are still running if you are watching this as it's released. So there are two competitions running, one's for a 100 pound voucher up and running and you need to go over to Instagram to check that one out. And one is I am gonna buy a pair of trainers up to the value of 220 pounds for the first 100 people that buy the This Messy Happy merchandise. No pressure, but that's what I'd like to do to reward those people. And if you're interested in what building a very big base can do for you, I'm linking this video here, which is Mary running her first ever ultra marathon and something that I am incredibly proud of her for. And she's obviously incredibly proud of herself. That's the subscribe button. Make sure you follow along. There's gonna be plenty more giveaways Ways, plenty more tutorial style videos, race videos. Oh, and we're moving to Thailand. Oh, and it's crazy. See you Sunday.